this is uh, the same things that we saw in in the Soviet Union uh, when uh, Alexander Solzhenitsyn started campaigning uh, for basically telling the whole truth, recognizing uh, Stalin's repressions and their full scope. Suddenly, his colleagues, the writers, expelled him from their union. Well, first, it was, of course, not the writers. It was the authorities that wanted him expelled. And those same writers who uh, greeted his first work when Solzhenitsyn was acting uh, with permission from above, those same writers throw, threw him out of the writers' union, right? And, and if you look, the stories of Assange and Solzhenitsyn are very similar because, uh, and the story of Snowden is also like that. Because what happened was that their opponents do not dispute the truth of what uh, all three men reported. Brezhnev did not dispute that Stalin's concentration camps existed. He couldn't dispute that. That was indisputable. But he accused Solzhenitsyn of not coming to the government, uh, not coming to the KGB with his doubts, with his problems. He was sending a message like, we would help you if only you came to us. <laughs> well, we had the same story repeating itself with uh, Assange and with Snowden. That may remind you how the American press wrote about Snowden. Uh, I'm quoting one of the articles. Why didn't he go the congressional way? Why didn't he go to his CIA superiors? They would understand. They would help. Well, uh, in what way they would help? They would take all of his data for themselves and they put him in some safe location, a prison at best, or a mental asylum at worst. And that would be the end of the story, right? That's why Snowden went to the press. That's why he had to leave the United States. That's why he ended up in Russia. The same story with Assange. If he went the congressional way, if he went to the British government, if he went to Australian government, we know what the reaction would be. They would take all of his data and try to isolate him. 